Hey everyone and welcome back to the Work Smarter Not Harder Dojo with me, Tony Harmer, aka The Design Ninja. What we're going to do here is we're going to build on and expand on a really popular video here. In fact, it's the fourth most popular video on my channel, which shows how to add a keyline or outline to Illustrator graphics. But we're going to take that forward a couple of steps and also answer some of the most popular questions around it. OK, so I have this piece of amazing sticker artwork uh, just here. And what I'm going to do, you can see they're all uh, separate elements. This is outlined text with a warp effect on it. And then this unicorn emoji uh, just here. I'm going to select both of those things and group them together. That is the first and most important step for this to work properly. Next, I'm going to add a brand new fill on top of what's there. Now, I'm going to show you the long way around doing that. For this, by the way, you're going to need the appearance panel open the whole time, so it's probably a good idea to keep that open. Down at the bottom here, you've got these two small icons, add new stroke and add new fill. So if I add a new fill, you can see that Illustrator creates a new fill on top of the contents of the group. Now, just as a ninja tip, if you want to do that using the keyboard, you can do it by holding down Command, that would be Control on Windows, and hitting the slash key. And that's a nice undocumented shortcut for you, so a really handy thing to be able to do. So what I'm going to do here is drag this fill down in the appearance panel beneath the contents. And then just like you might do with a layer, I'm going to click on it to highlight it and then come across to my effects. Now I'm using the properties inspector here. If you didn't have that, you could go to the effect menu to do this. Come down and choose path and then offset path. I'll turn on preview so we can see what's happening here. And as I increase the offset, I get more of a line around all of the objects there. I'm also going to change the joins from Mitre, the default, to round. Now, let me just show you over. Look at the end of the unicorn's horn just there. You can see how that flattens out. That's because it's mitering that join. But if I change it to round, you'll see it rounds that off nicely and does the same with a few other things here as well. So I'll hit OK on that, and that's done. Now, I may not want the small gaps here, uh, created by the counters in the A's and these small gaps here. There is actually something I can do to get rid of those if I want to. If I still have the fill highlighted in the appearance panel, I can go back to the effects and choose Pathfinder, and then I'll choose Merge from that Pathfinder, and you'll see how it fills all of the gaps in, including the ones between the unicorn head here and the actual text. So if that's something you want to do, you now know where you can find that. Now I'm going to create another fill. I'm basically going to duplicate the fill I've got here. And while that's highlighted, if I hit this small icon at the bottom, it duplicates that item. So now I've got both things there. On the bottom most of those two, I'm going to choose a different color. I'll just choose sort of a light color here, like yellow, for example, and then click on the offset path and then just change that to be whatever I want it to be. So I'll make this one slightly larger, like so. There we go. Perfect. And hit OK. And I don't actually need that merge just there, so I'm going to remove that. I'll just drag that down into the trash in the appearance panel because it's doing the job perfectly well without that. I don't need to see into these areas, and in fact I can't because the black fill is actually hiding them. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to the stroke here, and for this, I'm going to choose registration. Now, what I'm doing here is essentially what you may need to provide if you're doing a die cut sticker, right? You'll need a line to cut to. Now, some services like Sticker Mule, they will work it out based on the surrounding area, but if you want to define one yourself, then this is how you do it. So I'm going to use registration just here. Always consult your print provider, by the way, just in case they want you to use something different. But I'll use that, okay, set at one point. Now, you can't see that at the moment because it's being drawn on top of the black fill. But 
If I come down here to the larger offset path, okay, and select that, I'm then going to hold down the Alt or Option key and drag that onto the stroke, and you can see that it duplicates that effect. Now, this does look kind of funky because it's using all of the different anchor points and creating tons of different shapes. So if I highlight the uh, stroke just here, just to make sure it's targeted, go back to my effects, down to Pathfinder. This time I'm going to choose Add, and you'll see that they all get joined together into one thing. Well, we're nearly done, but not quite, because what needs to happen now is this actually needs to become a real path. And in fact, everything there at the moment is an effect. So to do that, I go to the Object menu, come down and choose Expand Appearance. Okay, now at first, it's going to look dreadful. Don't worry too much about that. I'm going to select the path along the outside. Now, as it's all grouped, I'll need to double click here to go into the group in isolation mode, select the path, and I'm going to cut that and then go back to the main illustration by double clicking anywhere empty. I'm going to create a new layer here, which I'm going to call cutter. Okay, just anything that makes it clear to my service provider that that's what it's for. Sometimes they'll ask you to do die cut or just cut whatever. I'll just hold down the command key, control on Windows and tap F to paste in front and then lock that layer. So there's my cut line just there, okay? Now, I could also do a little bit of cleanup here as well, so you'll see that when these are all created, they turn into individual shapes once the effect is expanded. Well, I could go in there and do a bit of cleanup if I wanted to. So if I select any, for example, of these yellow shapes, let's just drill down into those. Okay, and I'll do select similar just there. And then a simple regular pathfinder to make those into one object. Of course, it's not really necessary for you to do that. It's just if you want it to be nice and clean. Now you can save your file. Everything there is expanded and ready to go. You have a cut line. You can change anything you need to change, of course, as well. It's completely flexible. But there you are. That answers the top questions around this particular technique. And also, you've learned a couple of other things by using the Pathfinder effect as well. And there we have it. That's it. See you next time.